In lesson 14, we're going to populate a data grid which is hosted in a Silverlight 5.0 application. And we're going to con create a WCF service and which uses in Hibernate 3.2 to populate and retrieve the data for the data grid. We're going to create a test SQL Server database instance. Then we're going to create a database table using in Hibernate. Uh, I'm going to go over that quickly because I did the same thing in lesson 13. So if you're if you find interest in that, then go back and look at that lesson. Uh, I'm going to create a WCF service and configure in Hibernate. And then I'm going to create a Silverlight 5.0 application, uh, which contains a data grid, and consume a WCF service from it. The source code for this lesson and for all the lessons can be downloaded on the website thebestcsharpprogramintheworld.com. So go there and download any of the source code examples that you find interesting. I also have a blog there. It's the best C-Sharp program in the world blog uh, that, that I write about C-Sharp, and about in Hibernate, about WPF, and other uh, technologies that are interesting. In part one, we're going to create a test SQL Server database. We're going to use uh, Visual Studio 2010 uh, to, to just create a, a simple database instance. If you want to see that in a lot more detail, I did that in a lot more detail in lesson one, so, so you can go and review that lesson. And we're, like I said, we're only going to create the, the instance and no tables, because we're going to use in part two uh, in Hibernate to create our tables. To create a SQL Server database using Visual Studio 2010, open up your, your Visual Studio click on Server Explorer, right-click on Data Connections, and select Create New SQL Server Database. It'll open up this window, enter in the name of the server, and SQL Express is the version I'm using, and I'm going to name my, name my database SLNH2, and click OK. And then you'll see it's been added here, expanded, and you see that there are no tables. In part two, we're going to create the database table using in, in Hibernate. So like I said, it, this is going to be a quick review of what we covered in, in lesson 13. And if you want more, more details in it, then I suggest you go work on that lesson. And then we'll display the table that we create uh, and the data that we insert into it. To create our customer table that we're going to uh, use for the data grid, uh, let's create a, a new console application. And we'll call it NH Schema Test 2. And let's go ahead and add our in Hibernate references. And with in Hibernate 3.2, you only have two DLLs, which is very good. Then next, let's add our using statements, which are required for the in Hibernate. So next, let's add a customer class, which will be used to store our data. Let's call it class. Let's call it customer. And it's the same class that we created in in uh, in lesson 13. So you can go and get more information about that there. And then don't forget to add our using statements, uh, which are required to implement the mapping by code uh, capabilities of in Hibernate. So let's close, so let's close down our customer class and add some class variables, which is the configuration, the in Hibernate con configuration class and the session factory class. I also have this uh, uh, list of customers, uh, which is going to be used to uh, add data to our database and later uh, to, to be the container for the data that we select back from, from our database. So next, I'll add the methods which we created in lesson 13. Uh, they're exactly the same, except for 
uh, in the configure I need to change the database because we created the database with SLN NH2 but, but the mappings which is used to create the mapping by code which is new in an Hibernate 3.2 method a create database schema method so be sure if you use this drop that you know it's going to drop everything on your database and delete all the data as well the validate schema which checks and makes sure that our, our classes are consistent and the, and the relationship between our classes uh, exist on the database in the same way they do as our in our code and then insert data I just I, I insert data manually here for uh, simplicity and lastly let's go modify our main method to call those the methods which we just added from lesson 13 so so that we can create our, our database table and populate it with data and let's run it and then now we see that it has added that data into our database and selected it again so let's go look at our server and you see that it has created a, a customer table for us let's look at the table data and there is our data